Well, it started, I don't know how many years back in time it was, but it's certainly in the 80s, back in Port Elizabeth, in the house that I was living in then with my family, my daughter and my, my, uh, my wife. And I happened to be reading the daily newspaper. And on the front page of the newspaper were terrible reports about awful events relating to protests against the apartheid laws all over the country. You know, I read them and I registered them. But then I moved on into the paper, deeper in. And it was eventually on the back, one of the back pages of the paper that I saw a small two-inch little news item about a school teacher in a small country town in the hinterland of Port Elizabeth who had been lynched, necklaced was the way we described it in South Africa in those days because what they did was they put a tire around your neck, filled it with petrol and set it alight. That was our form of lynching. And this man had been lynched by an angry mob who suspected him of being a police informer. As the facts of that particular case finally came out, it turned out that he was an innocent man. But anyway, it was just a little two-inch news item, but for some reason, unlike the more bold and awful headlines on the front pages, it was that little news item that grabbed and held my attention. Uh, the man's name was Anela Mnyalakia. That is the real name of the man who was lynched. And in my play, he's referred to as Mr. M, because quite frankly, quite simply, my play is about a school teacher, an elderly school teacher, who in, um, has invested all of his dreams in terms of a better world, a better society, a better South Africa. He's invested them in one of his pupils, who is a brilliant young man. And the story, my story, that I go on to tell in the play is about how the school teacher and this young man come into conflict with each other about the best way to react to the appalling events in South Africa, the South Africa of that time. The school teacher is a man of old liberal values and he believes in slow transition, he believes in education. The young man is angry and believes in violence as a response to violence. That is the core of the play. Once I had started on it, simply because I wrote it under the pressure of my own response to the dilemma of that time, to the, that debate between what is the correct way to respond to a situation like that. To resort to bombs and bombs and bullets in, resp you know, in response to bombs and bullets. Is violence, should violence be met with violence? Or is there an alternative? Because you see, at that point in time, I myself was debating this issue internally, very, very passionately. A lot of my friends who felt the same way that I did about apartheid and what their white government was doing, had resorted to violence as a response. They had made bombs and tried to explode them. A lot of them had been caught. One of them had been sentenced to death. Many of them had gone into exile and were plotting outside of South Africa. I was still inside the country. And I was forced to ask myself, shouldn't I also actually, instead of sitting at my desk, putting words on paper, shouldn't I also actively commit myself to violent action. That, the play, My Children, My Africa, is actually about my internal debate in terms of this very issue, at the end of which I found myself believing, and it is a belief, an act of faith that has stayed with me to this day, that putting words on paper is a valid form of action. You know, you can throw stones, petrol bombs and Molotov cocktails as hard as much as you like at those armored cars that come in with their big guns. But you're not going to do much damage. Words can do much, 
much more than that. Words can get inside those armored cars. Words can get inside the heads of the people inside those armored cars. And in a way that is, that is under that basic belief, that act of faith underlies all my work in theater. That in a, 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 a space like this, for example, with an audience listening, you can get inside their heads. If what you've written and put out there on the stage, if the actors have embodied it in their, in their performance as an act of truth, then you, you, you stand a chance of really affecting people, maybe even changing people in their attitudes to certain things. And so, you know, to cut a long story short, that's what the play tries to deal with.